Hi, Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Thursday, September 15th. News today includes the announcement from City Manager Bruce Moore of Little Rock that he's asked Police Chief Kent Buckner to review the policy book by which now 189 Little Rock cops are given cop cars for free commuting, gas, oil, tires, insurance, and everything else, even though 148 of those police officers live outside of the city of Little Rock. This is a satellite to the debate over whether Little Rock police should be required in the city or not. These 148 get subsidized transportation to live outside of Little Rock. Some people think that's not a good idea. Buckner's review will help us find out if these cars are really justified for special duty officers who really are needed on call and how badly they're needed on call when they have to drive an hour to get here in the first place. So that's a good thing. News from the Governor's Mansion. The Governor's Mansion Commission met yesterday and uh, First Lady Susan Hutchinson said she's not happy. She thinks she can still smell rats that once infested the Governor's office there. 60000 worth of work on it wasn't enough. It's going to have to be ripped out and still more money spent there. The Commission also agreed that it was okay to buy Christmas decorations from Tipton and Hearst, which is owned by Stacy Hearst, a member of the Commission and a department director under Asa Hutchinson. Bad form to buy things from a Commission member even as she abstains from the vote. She says she didn't make a profit on it. This, of course, isn't really true. If she was able to unload unsold goods and get the money back for it, it went to her company's bottom line. It's a practice that ought to change, legal or not. The state Supreme Court today reversed another life sentence without parole for somebody who was sentenced to a crime when he was a juvenile. Billy Ray Smith in Pike County went to prison in 1977 shortly after he turned 17 for a rape charge. The Supreme Court said his sentence should be reduced to 50 years. He should be eligible for parole, but it's not automatic. Bad news from McCrory, a police officer there. Robert Baker was killed responding to a call in Woodruff County last night. His car ran into a deer and he died of injuries. Not quite as bad an outcome in Bethel Heights in northwest Arkansas. Two police officers there tried to stop a motorist. The motorist hit one of the police officers with a car. They opened fire and shot the motorist. He lived. The police officers weren't seriously hurt. Big news in marijuana, Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey, a former U.S. attorney, has signed legislation in that state to allow marijuana to be given to vets with post-traumatic stress syndrome. That's something that some Arkansas officials who oppose medical marijuana have said is a bad idea. Governor Chris Christie doesn't think so. A national anti-marijuana crusader is coming to Arkansas next week. He's been active in other states. He's on a, on a campaign, perhaps associated to some degree with pharmaceutical industries to fight medical marijuana. He takes a reasonable approach saying we just need more study, more time, and more time means no medical marijuana for people who need it. That's, that's the real choice. Mark Lowry is under investigation by the State Ethics Commission for failing to file on time or failing to file at all campaign finance reports. He's a Republican legislator from Maumelle. He was fined for similar campaign violations in a previous election. Is this just another oversight or is it a pattern on his part? We have a a forgiveness law in Arkansas now that makes it almost impossible to to find legislators if they correct errors that are made. If it happens more than once, is that just an error? We'll see. Mike Holcomb, a Republican from Pine Bluff, is also under similar, similar review by the Ethics Commission. Good article uh, mentioned on the Arkansas blog today. It's in the New York Times. Go to arkansasblog.com and read about Atlanta and its amazing Beltline project. Atlanta is a city that had lost population, had been strangled by freeway expansion and suburban growth. It's turning it around now with an incredible project to link up trails, pathways, old rail lines, and turn them into things that link neighborhoods and spur neighborhood revitalization. It's one of many major cities nationwide that are making these kind of moves. Here in Little Rock, we're just building our freeways rider because we've got to get the cops and city-owned cars back to Cabin Bryant faster. Somehow we're living a few years behind, it seems to me. And finally, also take a look at ArkansasBlog.com. Uh, Arkansas, uh, for an article about command and control, this great gripping new documentary film that's opening this week about the Titan II missile silo explosion in Damascus, Arkansas in 1980. It turns out assurances from everybody there that the explosion of the nuclear warhead perhaps was closer to a possibility than we ever thought. At least that's the point of the book and a movie about it. It apparently makes for great drama. It's going to open the Hot Springs Documentary Film Festival next month. I think I want to see it, but I'm not sure it's going to leave me feeling very good. But of course, we still have a lot of nuclear warheads that in theory perhaps are prone to accidental explosions just like the Titan II was. On that sober note, I'm Max Brantley. I'll be back tomorrow.